with Christ Jesus. Someone say seated above. Seated above. In heavenly places. Heavenly places. So God has to bring down low first in order to exalt. That's right. So understand that there is a process from the pit to the palace. Yes. yes. Someone asked for Joseph. There's a process. See, we want to jump to the palace. We want to jump to heaven. But we don't want to go through. We don't want to go through the Garden of Gethsemane. We don't want to drive that cross to Calvary. We want to sit on our behind and do as we want to do. And look good in the process. No sweat, no tears. I can tell you one thing, no cross, no ground. Oh First Samuel 2 and says, First Samuel 2 and 6 says, the Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ashes to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. There's no shame where you come from. There's no shame in sharing your testimony. Some people don't want to talk about their past or their struggles. But you will overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word Amen. of your testimony. Amen. In order to get to God, you got to go through Jesus. Oh, yes. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So you got to go through what Jesus went through. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I give thanks to God that we have the freedom of worship yes. in yes. this nation. You know, there are other nations where the believers got to go underground. And if they are found, they are dragged out. They're pretty much crucified, just like Jesus was. How many of you are willing to lay down your life for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or would you deny him? Some must don't even have to face crucifixion. Some of us have the option of just speaking the truth. And what we do? We lie! Mm -hmm. That ain't even a persecution. That was a decision right. that you had to make. Something as simple as that. So how do you think you could lay down your life for Christ? God don't need no Jerry Box, you know. Nope. He need real soldiers in his yes, army. Yes, yes. Not everybody's going to make that cut. My God. Jesus led by example. In 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, it reads, follow my example. This is Paul talking now. Now, so, it's so unique about Paul. Paul used to hunt Christians down and kill them. Y'all see the turnaround? Y'all see what God could do? In one encounter with Jesus. And he was never the same. So no matter your past, God could use you. Matter of fact, he liked to use the most ruthless people you could ever think about. Because why? When the people see the transformation, it's George dropping. And it's an encouragement, an encouragement to them that they're saying, if he could change, I know it's easier for me. Because I never do this and I never do that. It's an encouragement to those that are watching. Jesus led by example by carrying his own cross. It's outlined in John chapter 19 and verse 7. No cross, no crown. In Luke 9 and 23, Jesus said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross. How often? Daily. Every single day of your life. And not just when it's convenient for you. Not when you feel like it. But every day you got to take up that cross and follow Jesus. He says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. 
God is not a God of convenience. He's not your cell phone you can just throw in your back pocket and when you need him, you'll pull him out. I don't know what God you serve him. But that's not the God I serve. Understand the cross represents suffering yeah, and agony. You got to pick it up. Hebrews 5 and 8 says, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest, and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. It's not even Jesus who was exempted. God allowed his own son to go through for the sins of the entire world. 2 Corinthians 12 and 8 says, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. How can the Spirit of the living God have power in you if you're full of yourself? If your flesh is puffed up with pride and arrogance, how can God use you if you are not humble? Right. Right. How can God use you if you are so busy doing this and that? Do you understand you have to be at your lowest for God to use you? You have to be in pain. You have to be depressed. You got to be in prison. Some must only know God himself, look. Some of us only know God, but be in trouble, so what do you do? Send trouble your way. Sometimes he just needs another earnest cry for him to connect with you again to give you some years on your life. You could be approaching the end of your rope and don't even know it. You don't know God is having enough of enough with our foolishness and our rebellion and our grieving of his Holy Spirit. God is loving you. God is faithful and I can do as I want. Does it look like God playing that these days? Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest upon me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am made strong. Yes. Jesus said to his disciples, when you can't find them sleep in the garden, couldn't you stay watching me for one hour? What it is to give God one hour of prayer? And the Holy Spirit prompting you know. Would you? Oh, oh. Barely full. You know that the Holy Spirit said, get up and pray. Yes, Lord. Uh, as soon as I stretch. Now you found I'm responsible in your bed. And that's the one night the ambulance can take long. <laughs> there's a busy night because guess what? The full moon. All kind of taps was unleashed that night. And guess what? Busy, busy, busy. You're going to wish you had listened. So now you got to add on them hours. You're going to wait to see the doctor. My God. The hours you're going to wait on that air ambulance. The hours you're going to wait, depending on which hospital you go to, in that corridor. No food. No bathroom. Miss, I got to pee. Use this. Right. <laughs> Why are we so stubborn? Why are we so stiff-necked? Because it's of our flesh. Yeah. We don't crucify it enough. Yes. Yes. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 says, We are pressed out on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through our suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. 
Yes, we live on the constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. If you are a child of God, I ain't nobody trying to kill you. Stop man, right? I heard people say, Pastor Partner, what does dream mean? I said, oh, that's someone trying to kill you. Oh my God, oh my. I'm like, Jim, that's normal. You should be honored. You are even a threat. This is a part of warfare. This is a part of the real life of a child of God. You should be honored that death has even considered you. And how do you fight back? Like you do anything else. You know what I don't understand? When he's in the world, at least to carry on, the police had to call the back of us. <laughs> but now we say, Holy Ghost film, what about Tigers on our mind? And we think as a lie. Well, Lord, you know. What happened to the body of Christ? What happened to the soldiers in the army of the Lord? Do you realize if you, uh, listen here, the power that God gave us is to do what? To trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So why are we timid in the face of death? You're supposed to draw back your hand. One big blow. We got one stupid big brother named Michael. When you call him when he saw it, he even a long talk to him. When last you stuck your angel on some demons? They on standby waiting for your command. They waiting to slay that witch in your yard before she throw her dust. And you will. <sighs> and the devil laying you right out. To the point. No bears. No bears. No bears. Someone just tried to kill me when I was two weeks ago. Santa Santa Pete. Big Santa Pete. Funny run. The funny thing was the night before I had this dream that I crossed a certain person's threshold. And they were shocked I was able to walk over it. And it wasn't until I was praying during my time off and God said, Didn't I tell you from walking the enemy's camp? I said, okay, but when I, I crossed the threshold. I had a staggering dizziness and I held onto the wall and they were shocked I was still alive. So the next day, one o'clock in the morning, when I felt something going over me and I jumped over the bed and I flicked something off for me, it was a set of pain. I didn't even know I was stung. I just felt dizzy like I was drunk, but I don't I don't drink no more. Because that's the body used to love her. Ricardo <laughs> and cream. I know it is to be drunk. So here I am, staggering, and I'm like, I can't hold myself up all of a sudden. And I was like, why does my head feel this way? Going in the mirror. And I rub it and I feel it once. I said, hold on now. Something's not right. I said, God, what is this? I go on back out. Mom and them come because I wake up the whole neighborhood screaming. And they kill a the Santa Pete. And you know, slice and dice. Then I realized, I said, something is wrong with my head. Went back in the bathroom and then I saw the two blood, the blood coming out, two marks in my forehead. Now, maybe it was just my reaction to seeing it, but this business got worse. I said, you know what? This ain't no normal to do. And when I was holding on, trying to figure out where I was and everything was boozy, because it wasn't even like a drunken thing. It was like a psychedelic type. It was weird. It was something I never experienced before. I say, this is not normal. I said, let me call the ambulance one time because I got to stop this poison and I ain't trying to have no worse reaction to this. 
So the ambulance came, sound of Pete dead. They were preparing for his, his cremation. <laughs> and as the ambulance door is open and they're assessing me on the stretcher, what's your flying with a bee? Now y'all tell me what bee is flying one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> They settle back up. That's plan B now. Plan A ain't kill me because, see, the assignment was my third eye. In case you didn't know, that's direct access to your soul. I wasn't supposed to make up. Someone say, but God. But God. But God. God. That bee get killed too. They were cremated. I would like to send the remains to somebody, but um, they have not come forth to claim their animals as yet. <laughs> yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. Yes. His raw and his staff come for me. I tell you, for you are delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I shall live and not die. And declare a word to the Lord. Why are you not rebuking death? Why are you not speaking life? Why are you not using the scriptures against the threats of your enemy? Yes, yes, yes. God said, if you be faithful, he'll be an adversary to your adversaries. Yes, that's right, that's right. And it's the believers that are being buried. It's the believers that are gonna go to chemotherapy. It's the believers with, with GoFundMe. Why? When God gave us power. You was never scared of a fight when you was in the world. No. Now you're a sitting duck. That's not God's plan okay. for our life. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 2 and 3 says, You therefore must endure your hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. All what you're doing is what you're doing as a child of God, pleasing in God's sight. Or are you just claiming to be a soldier but you don't fight? Hmm? What is it? I don't know about you, but I serve a living God. Revelation 1 and 18 says, I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. The God I serve say he got the keys. So how I gonna allow the devil to take the keys from him? It shall not happen. Neither shall it come to pass. Colossians 2 and 13 says, and you being dead in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made a life together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a spectacle of them, triumphing over them. It. Someone needs to rejoice, man. Someone needs to rejoice. You see the word disarmed. That means you take a weapon from your enemy. Stop playing with your gifts. Stop playing with your anointing. Rise up, soldier, and fight your battle. Mighty God, God showed us how much he loved us by sending his only begotten son. For while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What did Jesus do to show his love for us? He laid down his life. Jesus died for us knowing that we may never love him. Y'all realize how deep that is? He went to Calvary knowing very well that we might not appreciate it 
that we may still rebel against him, that we may still not make it in the kingdom. He did it for us. And the least we could do is live for him. Yes, my God. He took on the weight of this world. He died for all our sins. Yes. Even the children that have not been born yet. My God. How could you not appreciate that love? How could you not love him back? John 15 and 13 says, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. So I ask you, how do you show the Lord that you love him? He said in his word in John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. My God. <laughs> this is the Holy Week. How much time did you spend with God? Church don't come. I'm talking you and your heavenly father. My God. My God. I'm talking about shutting in. I'm talking about crucifying your flesh by fasting. I'm talking about putting your phone down for an hour and talking to your other father when you don't even have a problem, yes. when you don't even need anything. You just want to talk. Yes. But yet we crave the attention of men who can't do nothing for us but right. fail us. We seek in love and admonition for no one who died on the cross for us. Did you just show your love by posting happy Easter? Have a good Friday. This ain't nothing wrong with spending time with your family, right? But last night as we was driving, three o'clock in the morning, the traffic was like three o'clock in the afternoon. The bars was packed. I say, God, my Lord. I beat the blood of Jesus on these streets tonight. Yes, yes. Because I'm tired. I'm tired, these people call it. The people are sick. They are dying. And they still would not yield to Christ. People are walking around with hardened hearts. And like leeches, they suck on to the bars and the poison they call alcohol that is stuffing them out. That is causing them to wrap around these trees. And the last thing on their mouths in their last moments is Father, forgive me. It's profanity. Now I don't care if you say that's head trauma. No, 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 no. What's in your heart yeah. comes out through your mouth. Yeah. But whatever you say, <laughs> but whatever in your heart determines what you say. And one thing about the Amos, we all grew up in the fair tradition of God. Even if we straight away, we know, look here. Oh, this bullet hole is very big. You know what, Lord, I think I can make it this one. I can need you to forgive me for this one. In your right mind. You will repent. But if you follow wines and spirits, the big five pound words coming out of your mouth, and you will fight every attempt to save your life. That is not God's divine will for you. But the people, they've hardened their hearts to Him. They grieve His Holy Spirit. They don't want to listen. They don't want to obey. RIPs seen on statuses every single day. And the people have hardened their hearts to God. What did you do this holy week that brought reverence to God? You call me the way. But you don't follow me. You call me the light, but you don't see me. You call me the teacher, but you don't listen to me. You call me the Lord, but you don't serve me. 
You call me the truth, but you don't believe me. My God. This week should be about Jesus. Not no Easter party. Everything that God has to honor his child, my final way to disgrace it and switch it. How Christmas get about Santa Claus and gifts? Huh? Everything that deflects away from Jesus got you spending money. Did you pay your tax? But you could buy hundred dollar Easter basket. No, see, we can laugh, right? But this is the reason why a lot of prayers are unanswered. You cannot discard over and repeatedly, and when you need him, you mad because he don't want some. You come, you need deliverance, the people pray for you, but you're still going back to how the demon get there. Yep. You got to cease from sin. You think every time you come, someone will pray for you? Someone will give you a word? You need a word to tell you, leave someone else for the Lord? Really? You need a word to tell you, leave someone wife alone? You need a word to tell you stop lying? Hey, y'all just play with God too much. And then blame chef. It ain't me. It's Pastor Johnson. She don't ever call when I answer. I mean, she don't answer when I call no more. And she online. She blue tick me. This is not about fish, fried fish. And all cross bites. This is a time to reflect and give God thanks and to spend time with God. Yes. He was crucified. How about you crucify your flesh? Okay. God ain't nothing like to do for you but serve you. How about I do a fast? How about no Easter Sunday dinner? How many of you can fast on Thanksgiving? <laughs> I can need a confirmation for that one because even me, I can like, hold on, Lord, Lord, I gotta make sure this is you now. <laughs> but this is a time where we gotta praise, we gotta reverence God because we don't want to be the ones that He just turn His back on when He's had enough. Amen? Amen. And the funny thing is, if you took a bullet for someone, right? And every try, you try, every time you try to talk to them, they, yeah, I can call you back. Um, I need a, I can go, I, I, I call you back, I, I forget you, you know. Guess what? Eventually, you don't want nothing to do with them no more. So I don't know why you believe you just gotta be on speed dial when you will do what you wanna do. And the devil right there like, mm-hmm. You got more time. God is loving. God is faithful. There's no one ever up. Don't listen to them. Then I said, oh, you see, I see you on someone's status. And I just talk. Yeah. R.I.P. What? Life's strange. People are not waking up out their sleep. I don't know what more evidence you want. This is not the time to play with God. The young going faster than the old. And under strange circumstances. You don't have to want more than this. This isn't life. This is one what God wants to do for our lives, people. We need to get our acts together. Galatians 5 and 24 says, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. What Jesus has for you is going to oppose what your flesh wants. you got to make up your mind which God you're going to serve. Repeat with me Galatians 2 and 20. And touch yourself when you say it. Say self. self. My old self My has been crucified with Christ. Crucified it is no longer I no longer who, live, who live, but Christ lives in me. Lives in me. So, I so I live in this earthly body, this earthly body by trusting by trust in the Son of God, the Son of God who, loved who loved me and gave, and gave. 
can sow for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. Give God the highest praise. So in closing, I ask you, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger of the sword as it is written for the sake we face death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered no in all things we are more than conquerors yeah. how many conquerors in this house today yeah. <laughs> In all things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For I am not convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither depth, or height, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. My Jesus is alive and alive forevermore. Amen? Receive the word of the Lord.